to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is one of my favorite passages in the Gospel. It's one of my favorite passage, passages in the Gospel because I love the way Jesus comes into the synagogue in his hometown and shocks everybody. Isn't it something? It was his custom to go to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. It's just a normal day. He, he has been out in Galilee preaching and teaching and comes back home to go to church on Saturday, just like he usually does, right? Imagine yourselves in that synagogue that day in Nazareth. Some boy that you knew growing up, right? Everybody's around uh, the synagogue listening to uh, the elders and the, um, and the scribes and the chief priests read from the scroll. And here walks in Jesus, who everybody's known his whole life, son of Mary and Joseph the carpenter. And he reads this scroll, this prophetic scroll from Isaiah, and says, it's been fulfilled today in your hearing, and then sits down. How would y'all react to that? If someone came in that you've known since he was a little boy and read that, you'd probably be thinking, is he talking about himself <laughs> or one of us? Or is it this John the Baptist we keep hearing about? I just love it because it is an absolute... Uh, break with tradition that this man the son of God comes in and announces his presence to these people that he's grown up with while at the same time embracing this tradition everybody the good news is here and I'm the one to bring it and they're probably thinking yeah right <laughs> in fact one of the great aspects of the Episcopal Church is that we have this wonderful lectionary put together by the greatest minds in our church to give us a reason and a shape to the church calendar and the year and scripture itself. We're reading this passage from Luke today because this is the third Sunday in Epiphany. This is the season of light. And every reading we've had since the first Sunday of Epiphany, where we're reading um, from the first part of John, you know, in the beginning was the word, to Jesus in the temple staying behind uh, after the Passover and Mary and Joseph losing track of him, right? To this one today where he says, it's me. All of these are consistent with the season of Epiphany, shining the light. That's the great part of our Episcopal lectionary. Today, however, we don't hear the next few passages of this part of Luke, which say they all rose up against him and tried to drive him out of town, throw him off a cliff. <laughs> because he was so presumptuous uh, to make this announcement. But let's focus on the epiphany part and go back to uh, our psalm this morning. If y'all would take it out and, and take a look at it, I wanna tell you a quick story about this morning. As is the case so many days when I come to St. Gabriel's and worship uh, with you, I start my day on the Holy Mount, exit, seven, seven, exit 16 at the Quick Trip. <laughs> the center of industry and commerce where I go to get grounded and get my 32 ounce diet coat for later on in the morning. This morning, I drove up uh, Interstate 85 and 985 evenly split. And, and please take a look at the first couple of uh, verses of Psalm 19 as I um, mentioned this to you. Because it struck me just as uh, Pam was reading it this morning. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. Isn't that wonderful? And so as I'm driving up 985 today, I can see the full moon on my left, which I guess is to the west, and the rising sun to the east. It's beautiful pink and orange, a new day dawning, and yet a message from yesterday saying, all right, your shift is beginning. <laughs> Most beautiful full moon, bright white with the sun clearly shining on it. But once I got off at exit 16 and checked in with my friends at the quick trip like I do every Sunday morning about 7 o'clock, uh, I looked over their shoulders as I was saying hi to them, and the moon was just bright orange and big as a basketball in the sky. And I said, look at that, everybody. Isn't that cool? It was right over uh, the desk so they could all clearly see it. 
and a clear message to me that not only has yesterday gone and the, sun, and the moon is setting, but a new day dawns. And this psalm, I think, is a perfect kind of poetic description of what hopefully y'all all got a chance to see as you were waking up and making your way out into the cold this morning. But yet again, another reminder that we are dealing with in our religion as Christians and in our faith tradition as Episcopalians, we are dealing with matters that go way beyond the firmament of the earth. We deal with life and we deal with death. We deal with God and we deal with evil. We deal with his son, our savior in the season of epiphany and the good news that he brings to all mankind, to all people all around the world. And yet that is just a part of the message of the overall love that God has to share with us. And we see that in our Old Testament lesson today from the book of Nehemiah. Wherever there is good, there seems to be bad. Wherever there is light, there is darkness. Wherever there is night and the setting moon, there is the rising sun. The psalm captures it so perfectly. Nehemiah and our Old Testament lesson are worth spending a moment on this morning because they give us some context. Again, in the lectionary, why are we reading about Nehemiah? Well, it's because in this day, a new day is dawning. Think about what you heard, and, and please feel free to go back and look at it in your bulletin this morning. Nehemiah is reading the law to the people. But these are good Jews. Why are they weeping when they hear the law? Why are they praising the Lord and raising their arms in the sky and then worshiping God with their faces to the ground? It's because a new day has dawned. And you hear it as you heard the word of the Lord this morning. This is a new day. It's a blessed day. Worship the Lord today, right? We heard several times Nehemiah write that. But why was that such a big deal? Because these are our Jews and they're reading the same Hebrew scripture that they've read of for their entire history. Well, in this particular case, Nehemiah is writing about a time when the Jews were newly um, reset in Jerusalem, newly uh, reinvigorated as a religion, and newly free to worship God in the way they wanted to. In the year 587 to Jews, this is a day that, or a year that they cannot ever forget. In the year 587 before Christ, Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian king, came to Jerusalem and absolutely crushed it. All the people were sent into exile, most of them to Nineveh, but the rest scattered all around the Mediterranean for two, then three generations. Finally, Nebuchadnezzar is no longer king. A new king of Babylonia comes into play um, at Darien, and he says, Nehemiah, you can take these folks back to Jerusalem. Let them worship their God as they wish. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how invigorating that was, how life-giving that was, how blessed that occasion was when Nehemiah and the chief priest Ezra are telling the people for the first time maybe in one complete day, this is the law of the Lord. And what's the last line of that verse? What's the last line of our Old Testament verse today? Because it rings true and I think is the reason that it's in our lectionary today. Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. That was in the year 540 or so. But what happens 540 years after that? Rome is in Jerusalem. Roman soldiers are running around acting just like the Babylonians did almost 600 years previous. The Jews in Jerusalem are thinking, we're going to go through all this all over again. What happened to the great times when Nehemiah and Ezra brought us all back together? And what happened to the new temple that we built to worship God in Jerusalem? This was supposed to be our time, and we were never going to go back again to being ruled by another kingdom, ruled under the foot of another, uh, another man. The joy is the strength of the Lord is our joy. And then Jesus comes into the temple in Nazareth, Nazareth, not in Jerusalem after preaching in and around Galilee, not in Jerusalem. And he breaks the temple culture completely and says, it's not about the temple. It's not about worshiping God in downtown Jerusalem. It's not about the Holy of Holies. It's about the good news. And so I'm gonna ask you one more time to look at your bulletin today. For those of y'all who are in the Baptist tradition, this probably 
today and what exactly Jesus read from the scroll in the synagogue in Nazareth. Because when I tell y'all that I feel like I've been called to preach the gospel and bring good news to the world, that's a message that I not only want to share to you, it's one that I want to implore and encourage you to share too. And so one thing that's important to have a good grip on as you do that is, Father Rich, what exactly is this good news? Well, Jesus tells us time and time again throughout the Gospels, but it starts here in Epiphany with him reading from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. And let's take a look at it. He sent me to proclaim, I'm now on page three of your bulletin. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I have good news for you, friends. Every year is the year of the Lord's favor. So bring that good news to those that you meet. Bring that good news to those that you see on the street, the poor, the oppressed, the blind, whether they are literally blind or just figuratively blind. Because every day starts with a new sun. Every day starts with a new message. And the light of the world is one that you carry with you wherever you go because you believe in Jesus. And you can share that light with everyone you meet. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>